does the Pain and Pink game mean for you this Sunday, being that you are currently fighting breast cancer? Um, what, is, what does this game mean to you as a coach? Um, it means a lot. It always does. Um, this is obviously a, a cause and a, a fight that so many people are affected by. Um, and, you know, it's really uh, very dear to the women's basketball community. It has been for years. And so, um, you know, but it is obviously a little more personal for me now. But I'm, I'm just excited, uh, not only for the game, um, just for the, the opportunity to come together as a community and and um, to, to hopefully uh, make an impact uh, financially uh, to support TMH and also uh, just to show the support that this community has, our women's basketball programs have um, for people that are, that are fighting and affected by this disease. Can you take us through a little bit of the diagnosis and what you're going through either day to day, week to week? And um, yeah, so uh, obviously I was diagnosed um, in September and had surgery um, to, to uh, take out the tumor. And then in the meantime and right now, I'm, I'm going through um, preventative treatment. So um, intermittent just chemo treatments and, um, and just in hopes to prevent it from recurring. So, um, but doing great, feeling really good and I'm just thankful for all the support and uh, both from everyone at TMH and uh, here at work and um, in the community. Has your current experience given you a different perspective on this pain pain summer? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, no, it's always been something that's super important um, and means a lot, but obviously when it's happening to you uh, personally, it takes on a different uh, a different kind of tone so but I'm excited about it I mean I, I really am I think it's it's a great way to just um, again just bring the community together uh, do it with Florida State women's basketball and hopefully make an impact financially uh, for for treatment um, for people that need it obviously you're gonna do it against a stellar opponent to have Notre Dame mm -hmm. here this is a yeah. huge opportunity yeah uh, I mean, this is an Irish team that's on fire, we went to stores, beat UConn a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. pretty convincingly. Just well, what about the Irish really mm -hmm. stands off when you turn on the film? Well, um, they obviously have one of the you know, best players this year in Hannah Hidalgo, um, their freshman superstar. Uh, you know, she's scoring around you know, a ton of points a game. She had 30 again last night. You know, she's just a phenomenal talent, but um, they've got a, a ton of great talent, just veterans um, on their team, um, really understand who they are and are just really tough on both ends of the floor. So, um, yeah, it's an exciting game. Really, really excited for such a great opponent coming in on Sunday. I just want to go on the record and say you are a superwoman and you mm -hmm. are making such an impact to a lot of young ladies all around the world. Um, how did you find the strength to be a head coach and still, you know, fight this battle that you're fighting? And what is your strength? Like, what, how did, what makes you get up every day to come here and coach these amazing women? <laughs> Um, I mean, I think it's just a privilege to, to have something like this to, to get up and do every day. Um, you know, uh, this is what we all do as humans, I think. Uh, uh, we just we keep put one, one foot in front of the other, just fighting, doing what you got to do as much as you can. Um, but I really, my, my strength comes from just the support around me. Um, you know, just people that have encouraged me that, um, you know, they're with me. They love me, uh, no matter what I can or can't do, and that comes from you know administration at Florida State. That comes from uh, the team. That comes from my staff, my family, the community. Um, every single person has just been right there with me, saying, "We got you, no matter what you can do or can't do on a given day." Um, but it's, I mean, man, what a blessing to be in the middle of a basketball season, just having to think about preparing for a, an opponent, an exciting opponent this week like Notre Dame, um, to kind of keep you just moving forward. Coach, um, I got a few questions. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's start with the bench. Um, last night, 28 bench points. You really needed it. Tonight, mm -hmm. got off to the slow start, mm -hmm. mostly because of foul trouble. Mm -hmm. But can you talk a little bit about the bench and um, how important that's going to be for you going forward? And how much yeah. do you need that? How much will that be a key to your success? Yeah, uh, we're always looking for contributions from our bench um, because they're capable. We brought them here to be scorers and to to uh, you know, be aggressive and help us on the defensive end. So we're always looking for that, and when we can get it, it's very, very nice. Especially when our you know starters have 
um, we get off to a slow start. So that was huge last night. And Carlin Villegas having 17, leading us in scoring, um, was really, really good. So we have all the confidence in them in the world and just continue to, to, to hope for that from them. Keeping with the bench theme, um, Amaya Bonner got off the season you know, at Game Busters. She's a big part of your win against mm -hmm. Tennessee. And then yeah. she got injured. Mm -hmm. She missed a few games. And now she's trying to get back on track. What do you need to do to kind of help her get back on track? And what do you need from her going forward in the season? We just need her to just continue to, to have confidence and go out and do what she can do, control what she can control. You can't control if the ball goes in the basket. But you got to be ready to shoot every time. you got to be willing to attack. Um, be willing to play great defense, and that's what she's done. She goes out there and, and um, does what we ask of her, and, and if the ball goes in, great. If not, she's still giving us stuff um, on the defensive end, and, and she had three assists the other night in our win against uh, Miami, big ones, um, you know, from attacking and finding shooters. So, um, you know, she just continues to, to do what she can do, uh, and that's, that's all she can do. That's all we can ask her to do. So, Coach, um, one of the things I've noticed, the last few games, you've gone to the one three one zone. Could you talk a little bit about that? Uh, you don't want to talk we don't play uh, in 1-3-1 zone. What, yeah. Is it a 2-3? Yeah, it's a 2 -3. Oh, it looks yeah. like a one three one zone. Yeah, okay. no, it's a morphing zone. Yeah, no, it's not a one three one um, but it's a zone. Yeah. It's a 2-3. Two, three. Two, okay. Three. Uh -huh. Can you talk a little bit about going to that? Because um, I think it kind of changed the game a little bit against Miami. Yeah. It didn't, look, it didn't look like they were kind of prepared for it. Yeah. I don't know if they still on the film, but I don't think you showed it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, can you talk a little bit about going to that and what you're trying to get out of that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that we have to use. We've used it all season, um, but we're continuing to get better at it. Um, and just depending on the team and, and the, the makeup of that team, we definitely um, like to use that as an adjustment to change the, the nature and the uh, you know momentum of the game. So it helps us against Miami, for sure. So it's more of a thing that you go to when you kind of feel in the game that you mm -hmm. kind of need it. It's not something that you, you know, we got to do this and, you know, no, no, it's not. It's not our. Go I mean, we always we're a man team, but okay. yeah, to make an adjustment and to, to change the kind of the, the momentum, we definitely pull out the zone. Yeah. Last for me, I care about this, but yeah. also third quarter. What what happened there last night? And also, it's kind of been a thing this entire mm -hmm. year, is because that's where you ran into trouble against Syracuse mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, can you talk a little bit what's about what's going on there? It's just, I mean, it. These, these are long games and 40 minute games, four quarters. I mean, the, the basketball is a game of highs and lows. I wish we could, you know, say that we'd be, you know, able to keep a lead the whole game. That's always the goal. But the reality is ACC basketball, ACC opponents playing on the road, it, it's tough. And so we've just got to weather the storm and be ready to, to hopefully get off to a great start and then finish well and see what, you know, happens. But it's just, it's tough. Do you think you were better in the fourth quarter last night? You kind of wore them down a little bit, and they kind of expended so much energy coming back in that third mm -hmm. that, you know, they kind of did, ran out of gas a little bit? Yeah, I think that's what we do. When we can finish in the fourth quarter, that's what we've done. We've, we've worn people down. Um, and it's hard to guard us at our pace and, and you know, just constantly attacking. And um, and so that was, we were able to hold on to the lead. And that's part okay. of your game plan? That's part of what you're trying to do? Always, okay. always. Play our pace, play our pace, play our pace. And so that, that takes a lot of defensive energy. Thanks, good. <laughs> hey, have you guys talked about the big picture of March? Yeah, I think you did a little bit of that last year, even though you're in the middle of it, mm -hmm. day to day, mm -hmm. game to game. But that your your goals are to get to March, to be in the NCAA tournament, certain seed, things like that? Yeah, um, a little bit. I mean, obviously, they, they know that our standard is to get to the tournament, and, and we want to be as high a seed. We want to go as deep as we can um, in March. But um, at this point, we're just we're trying to take it day by day, game by game. Um, and, you know, we've got – it's it's great. We've got just a couple games left in the month of February, one in March. We just focus on each one. Get that dub and and say, you know hope for the best. So they, the girls know what we want to do, uh, but we don't spend too much time focusing on it day to day right now. How big a deal is it to get that 